Hi, I am Rachel Morgan, a sales trainer and coach that helps you convert your leads into paying clients without wasting time. So today I'm so excited to bring on Bonnie Campbell, who is a registered dietitian with a master's in nutrition from Bastyr University. She did her residency at St. Luke's Hospital in Duluth, Minnesota. I hope I should double check that. Um, and worked as an inpatient RD at Virginia Mason Medical Center in downtown Seattle. She started working as an online nutrition coach for Stronger You Nutrition and eventually decided to spread her wings as an entrepreneur to start her own company, The Nourished Path. She has a variety of workout interests with punch cards at F45, Orange Theory, and yoga studios, as well as a home gym with a squat rack and Peloton. In today's conversation, I'm so excited to learn more about nutrition and how it influences our success within our business and how we can start putting better practices into place so that we can feel more successful and energized. Uh, definitely a different topic for sure about sales. Uh, the one I felt is still so relates to so many different things in our life. Uh, so let's get her on here. And good morning, everyone who is joining. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Thank you for joining. So Bonnie, I know I just gave an introduction about you, but tell us a little bit, like, where are you from? I am from Chicago, um, and you were right, Duluth is in Minnesota. <laughs> um, I have a little bit of Minnesota O's because my mom's from very close to the border. And I moved out to Seattle in 2013 uh, to go to Bastyr University for my master's in nutrition. And... Yeah, I I have recently started my own business, as you said, and now I have two coaches, and this is actually news to you, uh, talking with a third one. Ooh, well, I can't You heard it here first. Yes. Talking, talking, <laughs> talking. Very, very early stages. Um, but yeah, really, really amazing things um, happening here. A lot of people need support with with working from home, yeah. I don't know about you, or I don't know if anybody joining us can, can you know, relate to this, but it's hard because you used to be told when to eat. Right. And no one's telling you, hey, you should take a break and eat some food now. Right. right. I think we can all relate to that, yes. And actually, for anyone who is joining in with us, give us where you're from, we want to know, because maybe we have, we've been there before. And make sure to leave your questions Hello to for Bonnie if you have any as we're chatting. So now I have a question for you. So I get really confused on the difference between a nutrition code and a registered dietitian. Like what what is the difference for a registered dietitian? Yeah, so a nutrition coach is pretty unregulated as far as terms go. You could be called a nutrition coach right now um, mm. with no no nutrition you know certifications. Uh, a registered dietitian has to have their degree in nutrition and then does a year long residency and then takes an exam and then continuing education every five years. So some nutrition coaches are fabulous and they have really great qualifications and some it's just like a foot doctor versus podiatrist. Like so a registered dietitian has more educational background. Like yes, almost most likely. Um, yeah. There are the exceptions that prove every rule. You have someone with a PhD in nutrition that didn't go for their residency in their exam. But generally, you want to go for a registered dietitian, especially if you have any medical conditions in any hmm. respect at all. Okay. So. To think about. So we're, we're looking look for a registered dietitian. Nutrition coach, I'm sure, has many good things to offer as well, but the difference in education and how much time medical background of it. Yeah. Um, so many, okay, so I have this conversation because many mornings I find myself running on coffee fuel. <laughs> and I know that I am definitely not sure it's something that you do. Um, so what are your thoughts on how, what do you recommend doing? We set ourselves up at the beginning of the day. Yeah, so a lot of people, <laughs> especially with the rise recently in the popularity of fasting, um, and I don't think there's anything wrong necessarily with doing intermittent fasting, but what a lot of people do is they just drink coffee all day and have snacks. <laughs> so because it's faster, 
it seems easier and they've been told, oh, it's good for you. But having your coffee with your creamer and everything, that's not actually fasting. And you're just giving yourself a bunch of fat and sugar mm. and not giving yourself anything of any nutritional substance for your body to do something with. So it'd be much better to make yourself a breakfast. And that doesn't have to take a long time. In my cookbook, I have like 10 breakfast recipes that take under 10 minutes to make. And a lot of them are under five. Um, so I would make sure you have some kind of breakfast. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And make sure there's protein in it. So eggs are a really good source of protein, especially egg whites. But you can also just take any leftovers from dinner and chuck it in a pan. It doesn't have to be, uh, I'll take leftovers from dinner and chuck it in a pan with some egg whites. You're very Real fast. <laughs> You're reusing things and, and kind of changing the normal what breakfast looks like, that it doesn't have to be like bacon or whatever, right? Or no. be, I mean, it's a meal. You can eat whatever you want. Um, you know, one thing that you brought up that I feel like actually like a really good point um, is that coffee and fat it's not protein and you were like oh you need protein for breakfast so i know that's a slightly different direction but important fuel so how why is protein so to get in breakfast well so protein takes a longer time to digest and so it's going to keep your body fueled for longer mm -hmm. so and most people don't get enough uh, they just don't uh, and there's a lot of different there's a lot of different nutrients and, and that protein is just something people often miss at breakfast. So that's why I really mentioned that in particular and also having a fruit or vegetable. I think that's important. I know veggies at breakfast, people are like, mm, I don't know. But if you think about if you did make that example of just leftovers from last night, probably has a vegetable in it. You don't have to have breakfast was invented by Kellogg's basically. They did. We, we didn't used to have special breakfast foods. We had stale bread, and eggs because the chickens laid them. That's why we've got French toast. <laughs> so we had stale bread, we dipped it in egg to make it edible. <laughs> I thought about it that way, but yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So I think like for me, the like the problem is, is I wake up and I'm like on the go and I just like, coffee is just so easy because it can be made in the background. Think about it, it gives me a boost of energy, right? Cause it's caffeinated. And then I'm on my day and then you know, noon rolls around one o'clock. Like, oh, I haven't eaten yet. I need to go eat. And I know that I cannot be that either. And that's you're probably like, oh my god, like I can't believe you're. Well, there's all sorts of really good solutions now in the frozen aisle. Um, Egg witch is a really great breakfast sandwich that I like. Lots of protein in there. Um, uh, Jimmy Dean's actually is a really nice breakfast scramble bowl. Both of those, you just throw in the microwave for two minutes or less while you're making your coffee. And you can sit there while you're drinking your coffee and eat it. Um, it doesn't have to take a long time. Same thing with leftovers from the night before. You just put it in the microwave for, 20, for, for one or two minutes. Um, I think people make it, they think they have to have this fancy brunch every morning. And you really just don't need that. So why do you feel it's so important that we fuel ourselves like, I mean, okay, let me back up a sec. I know this is a different question, but how fast do you believe we should be eating in the morning? Because some people are like, oh, don't eat for the first few hours or eat immediately or like, when you, when should you? It depends on the person. Um, if you forget to eat though, mm -hmm. eat first because then it's done. And if you're not eating and you forget, some people really, they forget. I know you forget. Um, and then at <laughs> two o'clock rolls around and they haven't been able to focus since noon and they're running on their third cup of coffee and like they haven't gotten that much done. And then you're sitting here and if they'd eaten, um, say that bre like a frozen breakfast, uh, high protein breakfast sandwich and a banana or an apple, whatever, with their coffee in the morning, they would have been more focused all morning and then they would have gotten more done. That's the thing is that when you're an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. And when you have your own business, no one is telling you, you need to get this done today and I'm going to make sure you do it. Nobody's there. So if you don't have the focus to get these things done, they aren't going to, no one else is going to do them. It's just you. And right. no one is going to sit there 
unless you have a spouse or a business partner, even if they're not like your business partner, but somebody else who's going to check in on you at the end of the day and say, hey, you said you were going to get your sales page done today and write two newsletters. Did you do that? Right. And if you're not feeling focused because you didn't eat in the morning and you just have, I don't know, like coffee, it sometimes wakes up part of your brain and part of your body, but not all of it. And you're running on half cylinders because you don't have that food you need. So by having, if you, if you're the person who forgets to eat, if you have a really substantial breakfast and a substantial dinner, you won't need four cups of coffee. The you might I need two cups of coffee, but you won't because you like coffee and coffee is, I mean, caffeine is great, um, but you right. probably won't need four of them and you'll get more done. So what I'm hearing you say, drinking water now, <laughs> that's a good skill uh, to drink in the morning. But what I'm hearing, if you're feeling kind of sluggish for the day or you can't focus, maybe because you didn't feel your properly for the day because you didn't have protein to start off your day you didn't have a good meal you're you're kind of running around. like caffeine does like influence like your cells and your adrenal like i get more fatigued you know like because i'm just on well and then you're probably not sleeping as well if you're right. in four cups of coffee then you're not sleeping as well the next night and then the next day you wake up even more tired and even less focused so if you're eating in the morning Mm -hmm. or whenever it works for you and then you're you're still you're still having coffee but half which is very doable um then you get to the end of your day and you can sleep and then the next day you wake up you're energized you're rejuvenated and it's a it's a cycle and sometimes it's really hard to break that cycle mm -hmm. but monday's a really time great time to do it so if you haven't eaten yet today i haven't <laughs> Well, as soon as we end this, you can't just leave. No. Because everyone else, you can take your phone with you to the kitchen, and you can keep listening, and you can make yourself something to eat. Um, yeah. What are some good, like, that you would recommend? I know you said that, like, the breakfast sandwiches, things you can heat up in the microwave. What so another, uh, another one I really like is to make oatmeal, and then uh, you can make it in the microwave. I personally like it on the stovetop it's a different texture. So if you thought you didn't like oatmeal, try cooking it a different way. Uh, mm -hmm. And then after you cook it, it's important, after it's cooked, you could, and you have a little more liquid in it when you're cooking it, you can add a scoop of protein powder. Um, mm, and it makes it full of protein, it's really quick. And you can add, uh, I will usually add like frozen berries halfway through cooking it. Like I said, I do it on the stove top. If you're doing the microwave, just put them all in the beginning and call it a day. Um, and then you get like a berries and cream oatmeal situation. It's so good. Uh, but you want to add the protein powder at the end or you're going to get curdled oats. And that's gross. I did that once. Never again. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. No, no. So I know one thing that you're really big on as a registered dietitian is meal prepping. And I think that's what holds me back a little bit is I don't meal prep as well as I could. And I loved grabbing and going. Especially like, I mean, you know what it's like as an entrepreneur. Like, Sometimes you just don't have time, right? And you don't want to spend the time. So, oh, I like, yeah, peanut butter and berries and oil plus protein supplements. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you can actually, um, the peanut butter is great, but you can get, if you get salted caramel protein powder, skip the berries. Uh, it's like a Snickers oatmeal. It's really good. That sounds so good. Okay, so you're going to need to send me your a link. Or maybe you can say it here on your favorite protein powder because I think everyone's going to want to know now. <laughs> and we can share that or now, whatever. You oh, want. um, I like uh, true teen. It's just hard to spell. Oh, I can just try yeah. to type in my comments. That would be great. I like them because you can, um, if you go online, you can get sample size for $2 a sample and there's free shipping and you can try a bunch of different ones and see what you like and then order the bigger size. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then you can try it with your oatmeal if you like the combination. <laughs> uh, but back to the meal planning. I think what really oh, yeah. holds me back is that I don't do it. What, what do you recommend doing in those? Like, I'm sure you hear that a lot from people. We, like, we make it a non-negotiable in our house. I mean, I, we will meet, we meal prep every Sunday, every Sunday we meal prep for the week. We have containers, we put them out, we get them ready to go. The dog here 
gets really excited when my husband gets out his jars because that means he's making chicken and he might drop a little bit. <laughs> so he will also remind us to meal prep. Um, and we just make it an assembly line. It's so fast. We meal prep for the week in under 40 minutes. So we just take our containers out, we line them up, and we, we both grew up eating the same thing every day, so we don't really mind. Um, uh, we just make the same, you know, put the same thing in each container. If you do mind having the same thing every day, what I recommend doing is just doing two options, so having an A and a B. So mm -hmm. making, uh, you can do three of each or three and two. You could also, if it freezes well, you could still make five, throw two of them in the freezer, and then the next week you get the two in the freezer out, you make five, throw two in the freezer, and every week you're having an every other day situation, but it doesn't take any longer. So... Those are some of my tricks. I also have a recent blog post up on um, basically Lunchables that you can make yourself at home that are a bit more, not just Lunchables, they're not really cracker stacker situations, but something that you can make in advance. And then you just put in your fridge and you can grab it and you can eat it cold. You can have it in a snack fashion at your desk. Um, you can take it with you on errands, wherever, if you're going to someone else's house to work or an up work or something like that yeah well we i know work. i worked with you your breakfast you make this really yummy egg scramble <laughs> that you love and you just bake it for the week and you cut off a portion of it yeah and you have it so it's like literally done and made you don't have to think about it literally heat it in the air for your microwave right <laughs> like uh, more to it if you want it right mm -hmm. Lunch, you tend to eat, um, or you have like a smoothie during the day with your protein, vegetables, and then you also tend to have like chicken salad a lot, like shredded chicken, veggie. I do tuna salad when I'm going to go somewhere because the tuna is in a packet. And yeah. often, if, if the next day I'm going to be going somewhere because I can't make my smoothie, then I'll be like, well, I always have tuna in my cabinet, and I like tuna personally. Um, and so I'll just take whatever and I'll, I'll make a tuna salad, chicken salad's great. Um, great grab and go or hiking food or plane. I like eating that on the plane. Yeah, that's, oh my gosh, that conversation there too with like plane and what to prepare for that. Um, but I know for dinner, you often use a lot of meal delivery services, but it's already made. It's like meal prep, right? In many ways. Yeah. Uh, I mean... I get spoiled a little bit because I'm reviewing them <laughs> um, for work. So I, I, I actually really like Blue Apron. It's, it's pretty solid. They actually have a meal prep box, which not everyone knows about. I didn't know about until three weeks into it. And you just go, and it's literally a, four dinners, and you make it in an hour and 15 minutes was how long it took us. Uh, and I actually wasn't even, I helped Clint for the first 10 minutes chopping. And then he said, I got this from here. You go relax. And I played video games. So he finished it up all by himself, did all the meal prep. We had meals for the week all ready to go in under an hour. Um, so Blue Apron. Love, it's a nice reminder. Like you are busy. You're an entrepreneur. You both are. And you and your husband. And so it's a nice reminder that you make it a non and it takes you less than an hour every single Sunday you have your assembly line so what your, your ingredients are available and then during the week you're not even thinking about it, but you know what you're putting in your body is going to help you. what you're not saying is oh I wake up and I have chips and soda and and candy and all those things like I know personally when I <laughs> like I don't feel good for the day and it really does influence how I feel right and so I think also what you're saying is really important, like the type of foods that we're fueling ourselves with when we're eating, making sure that we have an actual meal is really important too. How we show up, right? Yeah. Yeah, and if you don't want to do a meal kit, which you don't have to, that's just, I've, I've tried like 10 of them now and that's my favorite. Um, one thing that I like to do, especially since there's just two of us, is I would make usually make dinner on like Monday and then Thursday. And I would make it something that would go well leftover, especially on Monday. So mm -hmm. for example, um, you know, I like to make pulled, like barbecue pulled pork. 
And then so the first night, maybe it's pulled pork sandwiches. And the next night, maybe we put it into a quesadilla and have like pulled pork quesadillas. And then the night after that, I'll put it in like a stuffed pepper or on a potato. So I'll do it a whole bunch of different ways. The same main thing, the thing that took the longest to make, I will make it in different ways. And it doesn't really feel like we're eating leftovers. Um, so that's another thing that I like to do is just make the main part of it and then repurpose. And that makes it so much easier. And is it meal prep? Yeah, it is meal prep. But it's not, oh, I'm eating pulled pork sandwiches every night for a week. Either. Right. You just make it so simple and easy. <laughs> That's the problem. It's super complicated. Like, every time, I, like, I know I go to cook a whole meal, it's going to be, <laughs> it takes forever to do. I don't want to have to do it. I'd rather have it be ready and made. I think, like, what you're saying is really, you're like, it doesn't have to be complicated. Keep it so simple. Start with your base. It reuse it, repurpose. You'll know that in the online space, right? So now, yeah. just like repurposing content, you can yeah. repurpose your food. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> All right. So, question: Is there some other stuff besides caffeine which can help stay awake for long? I've been using a lot of coffee and pre-workout supplements, which I probably won't recommend for anyone. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, the first couple days is probably going to suck because, like I said, you get. And you fuel your body, you have less caffeine, you're going to sleep better. And the next day, you're going to feel better. That first day, you might not feel it as great. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing is making sure you're getting enough sleep. And some people, you might need an afternoon snooze. Some days, I will give myself permission. If, I, if in the afternoon, I'm feeling fatigued, I'm feeling tired, I just lay down and close my eyes for 15 minutes. And usually after that, I'm wide awake which is awesome. Uh, taking vitamin D in the morning mm -hmm. with your breakfast can also, it's a sunshine vitamin and it helps wake you up. So that could be a part of it. Um, and just a multivitamin, it can't hurt, especially almost all of us have something laying around. So I would, I would take those in the morning, take more vitamin D than is in your multivitamin. I would take this time of year, 5,000 units. Um, in the I summer, think. you don't need as much because you're getting sun, but especially now we haven't had vitamin D from the sun since September, October, unless you live <laughs> south of the equator. So, or around the equator, even if you live in Texas or Florida, mm -hmm. you might need it. You still might need it. Right. Right. I, that's something I do every morning. I take vitamin D and it does make a huge difference and it's better to take it in the morning because if it does energize you, then you're going to be awake all night, which is not good, which, you know, doesn't keep you energized for the next day. Yeah. Don't take your vitamin D in the evening. No, that's a good reminder. I think that I always find too, like when I step away from caffeine, I don't need it as much or I don't like, I don't need to have like, I don't actually have five of coffee. I'm just saying that like, you know, the more you consume it, the more you want it and the easier it is to have a few cups before you feel satisfied or whatever caffeine source. A lot of people I know use soda. Um, but when I, I have a little bit, I only need like a cup and I'm good. It's more than enough. Well, and how much of the caffeine is being able to take a break and feeling like you're justified because you're making yourself a cup of coffee and you're having something you enjoy. So yeah. what if instead you took a break <laughs> and made yourself something to eat and enjoyed it? Or you took a break and went for a five minute walk around the block doesn't have to be fancy or, right. you know, play a game on your phone or play the wordle of the day. I know that's becoming less popular now. Um, uh -huh. you know, <laughs> you know, or, or get out, whatever you like to do. What if you just gave yourself permission to take a 10 minute break, just like you would having your coffee, um, and do something else you enjoy for that dopamine. I enjoy this hit which might be what your body's really, and what you really need. Right. right. So, okay. First of all, anyone who is on, like, if you have any questions for Bonnie, please leave them for us. We want to make sure we answer a great opportunity for a little one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but second, I, you know, being that you're with us, I, I know you bring a lot of this into your business as well. So I'm curious, like how, I know this kind of switches the gear a little bit for feeling your body feel energized, but is there any tips from this that you feel like you can do to your business? 
So what I would do is, well, if you're, if you're having your food, kind of first, roughly first thing in the morning, that's when it fuel you for your deep work task of the day. And I, I'm breaking that today by being on this live because, you know, but normally I pick one big task and mm -hmm. I take the first hour of my day when I have the most energy and the most focus for me personally, maybe not everybody has that. I'm sure we all have different uh, high focus times, but I, I look at my to-do list and I, I'm tempted to check off all the easy things. And I think the coffee is kind of like pressing the easy button to get started with your day. And by pairing like, oh, I'm going to have this food with, I'm going to do my deep work task today while that food is processing and while I'm getting the best fuel from it, that, and they go together then, and you're going to probably enjoy your deep work more, especially if you make some food that you enjoy. So that would be my tip is get your deep work task for the day done. And what do I mean by, do, do, do people, do you know what I mean by deep work, Rachel? You're trying to say ask the harder one. That's not just easy to check off. It might take a little bit longer or a little bit more thought into it. Something that we might leave till the end of the day. <laughs> you, you leave it to the end of the day when you're tired. And instead, it's better to leave your easy task to, at the end of the day when you're tired. Or I like to do an easy task right after my deep work task. Right. No, Get a, like a little, little reward. Um, I like but, that. It's like yeah. getting the hard thing out of the way, right? Right. It's similar. It's getting yourself ready for the day. If you wait, it's just like, you know, if you wait till the end of the day to decide what's for dinner to make it, you're going to order pizza or you're going yep. to have, you know, whatever. But if you know what the dinner's going to be and you have it done before your work week starts, or you at least have it planned out what you're going to have and have the food in your house, then you're going to do it just like same thing with your work tasks. If you know, I need this week, the most important thing for me is to get my website ready to go or whatever. And every day I'm going to focus on a different landing page of it. And then Friday I will proofread it. Well, now every day you start off with your biggest task of the day. It's the same. It's very similar tasks and it's a very similar way of training your brain. So if you're having a hard time doing those deep work tasks and you're having a hard time setting up your week, Maybe you set a block for yourself two hours on Sunday, or it doesn't have to be Sunday. Some people actually do best if it's Saturday morning, because then it's done and they can enjoy their weekend and they're done with all their chores. Um, but whenever it is, figure out when it's going to work, you know, when it's going to work for you and plan your week of food and your week of workout at the same time. And then you're going to, your week's going to flow. It's going to just flow. You're going to get it all done. Saying that, but it's a good reminder that you can just start the day with a checklist, which is really easy to do and also a good thing to do. That's probably don't even start with a checklist, but to also just start your week like, here's what I want to get done. Here's what I feel like break that into bite sized bite sized chunks, right? Just like you do with food. like get the hard thing out of the way and then kind of set yourself up for success for the week. And I think, you know, relating this back to say real quickly, I think that forget how our energy levels influence how we interact with people and the words that we use and the excitement that we bring. Because if we are not feeling energized, we might be focused or sluggish. And so we may not be showing up as our best when we're having conversations with people. Our current clients like deserve and so do the leads in our community. And so, um, you know, it really like what we eat and how we start our day is really important. That's why I felt like this was a great conversation we're alive. It's a little different, right? But it's a good, it's a good reminder. If you're running on cup on coffee and nothing else, I think we've all been there where you think everything's going great. And then you hop on a sales call. And you're almost like a, a like a robot, like, like a, our old CDs that would skip, or like a robot that's having trouble, like, for error processing error, like your, your mouth is running, but your brain is not there. And mm -hmm. We've all been there, and a lot of that is just too much caffeine, not enough food, not enough sleep. Right. Not right. enough water. I definitely did that for a manager. I ran happy because it was go, 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 and I didn't set myself up for success. So I needed a dietitian like <laughs> to help me put in better. So, 
Well, Bonnie, gosh, is there anything else that we like to love to share about healing yourself properly? Um, I don't think so. But what I would say is for anybody who's watching either live or recorded, I want you, you're on Instagram right now, which means you're not working. <laughs> so I want you to go and plan what you're going to eat for the rest of the day or for tomorrow, depending on what time it is, and then plan what you're going to do for your business either for the rest of the day or the next day. And I want you to put a time on your calendar for this weekend or whenever, but a two hour block to do meal prepping and schedule prepping for yourself. I want you to try that. Just try it once and mm -hmm. see how it goes for you. That's a good tip. I like that. It's, it's like try it once and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But at least yeah. I can't literally the worst case scenario is you ate breakfast every day like and you wasted two hours of time planning to eat food like there's no downside to trying it and you won't know how it's going to work for you until you try it right right and to summarize to really quickly what you said is maybe eat right away or not maybe like wake up but eat right away if you forget to eat right so don't don't wait I have eat like you know within the first hour or two like and make sure you eat some kind of protein protein your body needs it right we need enough like fueled so don't gravitate towards coffee <laughs> and if you if you want recipes i've got a ton in my quick and easy cookbook uh, you can get that on my website anourishpath.com and i've got i think the 20 28 or 30 recipes in there and only maybe three of them take over 15 minutes to make. I love there, and the, even the ones that take more than that time are like, put everything in a pot, let it cook. <laughs> like, that is something I also, that I admire. Want to work smarter and not harder. I know. Okay, but you, you want things quick and easy. You don't want to. There's so many other things to do. Right. And I, you really bring that to your coaching clients. So... Because we don't need more on it, right? Right. So, well, Bonnie, okay. How can people work with you so they can get your recipe book? Yeah. Your recipe book. You can get my recipe book and you can get on my newsletter on my website. You can follow me here on Instagram. I post several times a week helpful stuff. And uh, if you want to look more into working with me, you can go to my website to my contact page or my services page and, and learn more about... Um, nutrition coaching and inquire to see if we're a good fit to work together. And yeah. And I believe you work with clients, you start off with a three month container and then there it's kind of month to month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to lock somebody into a year long contract or anything like that personally. Um, and oh, I was going to say something I forgot. Something about your website, seeing if you're good at cookbook. No, I don't know. <laughs> It can't hurt to look into it. You know, if you think that you could use help with your nutrition, we work with all sorts of people. We can work anywhere, honestly, even internationally. Right now, all of our clients are U.S. and Canada, but. Right, because you operate on. It's online, and my licensure is national. Uh, so internationally, the only problem I don't, I, I've never really looked into someone with a medical. Anyway, that's totally, you know, neither here nor there. It's a super niche case, but. Reach out to. Mm -hmm. Well, I will say really quickly too on here that working with you, I know you're really good at listening and examining what's already happening and suggesting things as you go in an overwhelming way. It's like, let's just try this one thing, see if it makes a difference. So you have never judged process you are very open to like collaborating and learning and listening and I think that's really in a coach right is that they don't make you feel bad especially food it's a very little thing yeah I I will not judge mm -hmm. I, I've seen everything I mean I did judge when someone ate literally two pounds of cashews in one sitting <laughs> but that was like that wasn't judging that was more like whoa like, sometimes that'll happen, but it's super rare. I've seen it all. I've seen, wait, seen everything. <laughs>
Well, Bonnie, thank you so much for having me on here. Thank you for having me. Of course, my pleasure. And you know, everyone, please reach out to Bonnie with your nutrition questions. So, and I would look forward to anybody who does try that next week. If you could send me a DM and tell me how it went for you, whether it was like amazing or you're like, no, it was the same as always. I want to know. So send me a DM. I'd be really curious. Yeah, I love that. What a great try out. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great start to your week. You too. <laughs> Bye.